So here's our 150cc swapped Apollo RFC. What is up guys and welcome back to the channel for another video. You guys read the title right. We got the 150cc engine is in and it's time to start the swap. So let's jump right into the box. Let's go. So if you guys are doing that engine swap just yourselves, uh, you guys can follow along and I will show you guys how to swap in 150cc dirt bike engine into your 125cc pit bike. So I can confirm this plug here that runs the electronics from this engine, they are the same. I can confirm that these plugs, these are the same. So this should be a direct swap in from bolting in to electrical. Everything should be a just direct plug and play. No extra mods needed. This is a four speed neutral is at the bottom. And there we have it. That is our 150 CC uh, motor. The only thing noticeable I can tell you is that this one does not have a clutch plate, which like a cover on the I guess that's part of a different design well I think all that's left to do now is take this sucker and turn this bike upside down and put this sucker in there right so after struggling my ass off to try and freaking get this engine in took way more finagling than it should have the engine is finally in there's definitely like a sequence of bolts of which bolts you have to put in first to be able to get the rest in otherwise nothing's gonna line up and it's just gonna go in like dog poopy and you're probably gonna start cross threading shit. So it took a whole hell of a lot of finagling. The engine is in. Uh, there's a couple things to note if you're gonna be doing this swap, I just found this out now which sucks because now I need to order more parts. But if you're doing this, uh, you need to know this. The Kickstarter, right? Uh, this is your Kickstarter, it normally goes on this shaft here. This is the 125 you guys are looking at. That slides on there, vroom, that's what you use to kick it over, right? If you look at this shaft size, Take note of that shaft size. It's small, it's like the width of a, a finger. That's the new kickstart shaft. And uh, it's way, way, way bigger than this little tiny hole that's on the 125 one. So you're gonna need an aftermarket kickstart. So now that we got the engine finally in, I'm gonna pretty much be pulling it back out. Cause now that I figured out it does fit because I want to make sure it fit before I started doing anything like serious of really cranking down bolts and loctiting everything. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull out bolt one by one and swap them out and put blue loctite on everything and tighten that stuff up real good uh, so you don't have this engine falling out because that's like the last thing you want. Uh, there's one other thing I guess to note is that this spacer, this guy here, uh, normally on the 125 it was actually on the other side so that spacer just needs to be moved. Uh, and then these clamps, they may, they look like they don't fit at first and that's because they hit on this nub. So you actually have to remove them off the frame side here. Uh, other than that, you have your main four bolts up here which all fit in perfectly. If you're wondering why there's a spacer, it's because I still have to put the, uh, the skid plate from the other engine onto this engine. This guy here, it bolts up, no problem. Same thing here, you need to remove these two to be able to get at this one. Uh, other than that, it's all bolted in and it's time to start uh, putting all the everything I guess back together. My next dilemma is I don't fully understand how this clutch cable goes into this new like system because the old 125 had the clutch down here on the casing and this one has it up here so I'm just trying to figure out exactly how this clutch cable is supposed to be run because that doesn't slide in there like it I thought it was supposed to. Because when you pull the clutch, it goes in, but then it doesn't come back out. So I'm not too sure here. I'm guessing I'm going to fiddle around some more with it. All right, so it's now two days uh, since that last clip you guys saw. I went around town yesterday trying to find a Kickstarter for the 150cc. 13 millimeters on the 125 cc and the one on the 150 cc is a 16 millimeter and like I went to both bike shops around me and neither of them have anything like that in stock uh, and then I went online trying to find one uh, all yesterday and no one has anything that's going to be here unless it's like in late August into September maybe even October which is just like not acceptable so I'm still trying to figure out where to get one and um, while I got it here check out our shirts link down below check out some of the merch support your boy because this build's getting expensive the last you saw me, I was messing around with this clutch cable uh, and long story short, we ended up having to like build a little like spacer so we just like notched it and slid this piece onto the clutch cable because this, this is meant for a 125cc and obviously this is a 150cc so the length isn't right on the clutch cable so that's like another thing. They do sell one but I mean I'm trying to get away with using this one so I've got it so it actually it actuates and pulls the clutch lever. I just don't know if that's enough. 
uh, to fully engage or disengage and I don't really want to burn out the clutch so there's that I'm gonna have to quickly test out when we do get it fired up and running um, is to just test if that clutch actually can work to fully disengage and engage it. Other than that, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I guess I'll start sticking some more parts on the bike and continue where we left off. All right, so I think next that I'm gonna tackle uh, is routing this vacuum line, uh, which is your crankcase uh, blow-by. This is, I'm just gonna end up, uh, normally this would go up to your, your oil air separator that's up on the back side, uh, and that would run up to it and runs through this little thing, and then there's a vacuum that runs down the back side of the engine. Uh, everyone's told me that those are just pretty much junk and uh, don't worry about it. This here is the oil air separator that I'm talking about, and it just has two vacuum lines that run off at one here and one here. And one of them just gonna goes down to the ground and clips into that clip back there. Uh, and the other one here, this one would actually run into the engine and it goes through this little filter. But what happens usually is this will fill up with oil and get gunked up over time. And then this doesn't let your crankcase blow the blow by pressure out and then you blow up your engine because you have a lot of back pressure in it. So that's why they delete these things. There's our oil air separator out. You can see that this is just like white and milky and I don't even know what this is, but this thing is filled with water and all sorts of nasty looking shit in this thing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try and route this little vacuum line. I'm probably gonna end up needing to snip this cause this is like dumb long. And now we've got that run, that that runs down the casing and it drops right out down to the ground. So the next thing we have to deal with is all of these wiring harnesses. Things may get scary for someone, but this is why I went ahead and as you can see, I've labeled everything from last time. So the stuff that's still here should be able to plug right back in. Well, you, if you guys wanna see me take the old engine out, you guys can go back and check the previous video. You can see how to pull the engine out of the bike. So here's our, this is our wiring harness that's uh, on the chassis side. And then here's your control module. Uh, which sits up in here, up in the front of the bike, and that's the brains of this wiring harness that we're gonna run into this bike. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna throw these guys in. Hmm, what was D? What was D? I don't really remember where D. Now this is why I'm glad I made this list and I couldn't find the list uh, on the shelf, the actual bench, but I have the video here on my phone. Uh, so luckily I could pull the list up here and see that D was my ignition kill switch. And you know what, I couldn't for the life of me figure out what the D went to, uh, the D. But then I remembered, oh, okay, I have this list. I look at my list and it shows me D is my ignition kill switch. So then I just go, oh, the kill switch stuff is all just being hung over uh, on the front of the bike. And there we go, there's our D cable that I'm looking at. Our engine is fully wired uh, and plugged in. Now next we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put that chain, that's gotta get put on the chain ring and up here uh, where the stator is. And then especially you don't wanna forget about this harness. This is gonna be on the other, this is gonna be on the 125 engine. Uh, and this is a ground that goes here onto this, this bolt here for the stator. Now while we're in here, I'm also gonna go ahead and count the teeth and see what what key, teeth count this engine has if it's not the 16 tooth that I have on the other bike. I'm, while I'm in here, I'm gonna go ahead and do that mod the, that I did in my other video. If you guys wanna see it, it'll be up in the up in the corner there. Uh, it's the how to make your pit bike faster mod. So once again, check the video link up in the corner. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just like, like that and we're gonna have it on there and now we've got it swapped over. Now make sure, make sure, make sure if you're doing this, you're gonna use some of this blue Loctite because this is a moving part, right? This spins on here when it's got that. So these bolts can come loose if you don't. So make sure you're putting some blue Loctite on them. Yeah, don't forget your flex plate. The flex plate has to go on there. Uh, and then to set these bolts to actually make them tight because obviously this thing spins right now, we gotta set the chain on uh, and get that so we can actually tighten this guy down before we put this cover back on and cover this side up for good. So after a good old fashioned war with the chain, that sucker is finally on there. So now we're gonna go ahead and just try and put our stator cover back on. So there is that side on, that's on. So I guess next we can go ahead and we can put our little Kickstarter on. So I guess I'll do that. Oh, that feels solid. That feels real good in this bike. All right, so as my shirt says, uh, I did some zip tie mechanics and I think I've got my clutch cable situated enough that when I pull it, it seems to fully 
engage and disengage, I believe. Now, if you can recognize this part here is not on this bike here. So I'm gonna head crack this sucker off and uh, we'll throw it on the other bike. Pop this sucker off. All right, so we got our pipe off and let's go ahead and put it on here. All right, so we have that on. And I guess when we're here, next from there is going to be going and putting on the carburetor. So I guess let's, uh, let's go ahead and just do that too. All right, so there's the carbon. Uh, now I guess we need to go ahead and put the throttle cable uh, down into the top tube there. All right, so we got the carb throttle is in there. We've got our fuel line run. We've got our drain uh, this is our vacuum vent something blah blah blah. This one's the fuel drain uh, And then we gotta stick the gas can on and we're freaking pretty much there boys All right, so we got our fuel filter. That's all connected gas tank bolts are tight there and the two down there But it's the tank itself looking pretty grimy and dirty So I'm just gonna go ahead and clean that up real quick. So let's just go like this all right, there's our gas tank. That's nice and look. That's looking fresh. Well, there's my exhaust. Uh, it's looking pretty, pretty gross. So I guess I'm gonna go over and I'll do the same thing and I'll just give this a little spit shine. All right, and there's our pipe. Uh, it's uh, shined up and as clean as it's gonna get. So go ahead, we're gonna assemble that and stick it up in that. So there's the exhaust. It's just sitting up in there. Now I'm gonna work on getting the clamps here, the clamp right there. And then it's got to tighten up these bolts. So uh, we'll go ahead, stick our plastics on there. But man, this thing is actually like pretty, pretty freaking nice looking now. Engine, I'm stoked on. I can't wait to rip this thing. And just like that, our swap is in. We got the 150 cc's in, bolted up. Everything is done. Uh, the only reason we can't start it right now is because I don't have the Kickstarter. Uh, I just, I can't kick it over. I can't start it, so that's that. Um, so I'm just gonna be waiting for a Kickstarter. And then I gotta go over and just do the oil, the air filter carb. But hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you guys wanna see some more, if you wanna see the 150cc running in the RFZ, make sure you guys click subscribe. Check some more of our videos out in the meantime. Support your boy by checking out some of our merch. And you can help out the channel by free, for free, just by clicking like. It really supports the channel. So thank you so much, and I will see you guys with the RFZ running in the next video.